Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly and in this video, I'm going to talk about some very important shortcuts that you can use while you're making a financial model. A couple of days ago, one of the readers at Goodly, his name is Kunal, asked me a question that can I let him know 10 shortcuts that have tremendously helped in my uh, financial modeling career. Um, so I said, sure, why not? Uh, and I will make a video out of it because financial modeling is one of the topics which is very close to my heart. And in this video, I'm going to talk about not just 10, but a lot more than 10 shortcuts. But the good part is that these shortcuts are very, very specific to only financial modeling. To make things easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide uh, the entire video into two, into four parts. The first part is about, or the first set of shortcuts is about uh, specifically when you set up the model, like from a blank Excel sheet, you're trying to make a model and what shortcuts would you would help you the most the second part is going to be about when you actually make the model you write formulas you make calculations and things like that and the, the third part is going to be uh, when you audit the model once your financial model is complete you find there are a few errors or if you get a financial model from some other company and you're trying to audit that what shortcuts would you use to audit the model fourth and the last is a few tips on saving the model the the model that you're seeing in front of you is one of the previous model that i made it's it's a, a road project I'm going to talk about this model, but uh, let's just get started from a blank Excel spreadsheet where we are trying to set up the model. All right, so we are on a new sheet. Uh, what we're going to do here is set up two sheets. The first one is going to be like a control sheet where you will control all the model assumptions from and you will put down all the assumptions of the model in that sheet. And the second sheet is going to be like your calculation sheet where you'll put down all the calculations, calculations like your balance sheet, your expenses, your revenues, your income statements and kind of that stuff. All right, so uh, let's just get started. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to make the calculation sheet. The first thing that I do is I select the three columns on the start and I use the shortcut Alt OCW to resize the column width. And uh, typically what I do is I set the width as two. I use this column uh, in the larger uh, column size for about 30 and then I leave two or three columns uh, empty here and then from here I start making the model right so this is how I structure the model and I'm going to explain that why do I squeeze this column uh, to a smaller width size in just a while the second thing that I do is I use the shortcut alt h o h to resize the column and the row height let's say I'm just going to set the row height to 30. Now this is going to be my headline row. So let's just write some headline here. So let's say I'm just going to write, uh, this is let's say, um, uh, a new start up financial model, right? And I'm, I'm just using the shortcut alt H at middle AM alt H AM to put this in the center of the cell right and then uh, i use the shortcut uh, shift space bar to select the entire row go to the home tab and then fill it with, with a very light color and then just some changes in the formatting here and then this is good to go all right that's about it now this is uh, let's say um, my uh, let's say the headline of the financial model and this is where the model is going to be created now the second thing that I do is I don't want the grid line so I just turn them off so the shortcut for that is alt w v g so that's how I turn the grid lines off all right and now I'm just going to start making the model so uh, I'm just going to write let's say something so let's say start year or let's say uh, start here that's fine so let's say we are starting the model into 2017 and then we're adding one year after that and then we let's say we will try to make a 10 year model 25 27 right so up till 27 let's say my model is going to finish uh, in uh, 20 uh, 27 and after that I don't want the spreadsheet so the first thing that I do is after the R column I am just going to lock this so from S Till the end of the spreadsheet i'm just going to lock not lock but hide all the cells so i'm going to select from here press the shortcut control shift in the right arrow select till the end and press control zero to hide all the columns and now all the columns are hidden right the benefit of that is let's say if i'm trying to make a calculation and you will find this benefit extremely helpful when you're trying to make the model let's say i'm trying to make the revenue um, Right, and I'm just trying to do some calculation here. Let's say I'm just trying to make, let's say the sum of some empty cell as of now. Now the benefit of that is, let's say I have a formula here and when I do a control shift right arrow, my spreadsheet automatically gets 
you know um, bound till column r why because the sheet is hidden after that and i can just press control r as a shortcut then to uh, you know copy the formula from the first cell to the right hand side to to the rest of the cells right so that's that's a little trick there all right so uh, that's what i do the other thing that i do a lot of times is that I'll, i use control and the arrow keys to move so this helps me a lot moving in the entire set of cells rather than moving one cell at a time so control and the arrow keys to move to any direction all right and uh, once i am done with let's say setting up the model then i use alt w f f to apply uh, the uh, freeze panes right so this part is going to be static and then on the left hand side is going to be static and this is this is what can move right and then uh, i'm just going to use the shortcut alt h o r to rename the sheet and i'm just going to call this as uh, let's say uh, the template and then i'm just going to create another sheet the shortcut to create another sheet is shift f11 rename this as a uh, control sheet this is where i'm going to make my controls again i'm just going to resize this uh, to 2 use the f4 key to repeat my action on column b and then um, again i'm just going to instead of doing the same thing over and over again i can just copy that and paste it here and then then um, um, use this at larger font size uh, and then i'm just going to start putting down the assumptions here right um, and then from column g i'm just going to squeeze this to uh, 2 and then from column h i'm just going to hide the rest of the cells so from h I'm just going to select till the end. Control Shift and the right arrow, and then press Control Zero to hide that off. Right now, this becomes my control sheet. Again, turning off the grid lines. Alt W V G. Now you can put down your control. So let's say I'm just going to say uh, I have my revenue controls, uh, and I have let's say line one, line two, line three, and whatever. Like you can just mention your controls here, right? And then you can just write down your controls here. right whatever controls you're writing uh, the other thing is that i also highlight this uh, a bit in the larger font size so let's say 12 or maybe 14 in the size right so that this part is important so revenue controls stands out very clearly now let's say i'm just trying to make expense controls so i'm just going to copy that and paste it underneath and i'm just going to you know replace that with expense controls uh now when what i do is i often group the controls together so let's say i want to show all the revenue controls together so i'm just going to select all the three or the four controls that i've made maybe more maybe less and i'm going to group them the shortcut that i use to group the rows is alt a g g alt a for apple g for golf g for golf alt a g g this allows me to group the rows together and i'm just just going to say group now all the revenue controls are grouped under this alternatively you can also hide the rows but that's not a good sign you generally don't get to see the plus sign and the minus sign when you hide the rows right and similarly you can what you can do is you can do the same so i've just grouped the rows i'm just going to press the f4 key and i get that now you can uh, see all the grouping and all the ungrouping taking place at the same time right so that's pretty cool and the same thing that i do in in the template as well now you also get to know that why did i use uh, two columns uh, in the smaller uh, size the width size because the first column is like a margin and the second column is like uh, uh, the column where i write the headings and the third column is actually where i write the text right the assumptions now the point is that if you just squeeze the width of column b then you see that the column c starts from here and it looks a bit of indentation here right so that's uh, cool the same thing is going to be applied here uh, i'm just going to write the heading here and then you know uh, let's say i'm just let's say revenue calculations so i'm just going to copy it from here so so revenue and then i'm just going to say calculations right and then i'm just going to say line 1 and line 2 line 3 and then so on and so forth and then i'm just going to group all these together alt a g g and then group them together right and then this becomes together right so it looks pretty cool that way and the model becomes a lot easier to read all right so those are the few uh, keyboard shortcuts that i use uh, while setting up the model next what i'm going to discuss is that how can you uh, what shortcuts can you use while you're trying to actually make the model like do actual calculations right All right. When you're doing the calculations, and then you obviously need to copy the template and make the calculation sheet. So let's say I'm just trying to make the revenue sheet, and the way that I can copy the template and make multiple uh, similar templates is by holding the control key on the keypad, 
and then start dragging the sheet and as soon as you you will drag the sheet you will find that you will have a plus sign and note that I still have the control key on the keypad uh, held and then I'm just going to drop it right and then you will find this is now as template 2 and I'm just going to use the shortcut alt HOR and call this as revenue right so and then you can make similar sheets and make, make revenue expenses calculations like whatever you can make right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop over to a pre-made financial model and teach you the quick tricks and the shortcuts that I use to actually make the financial model all right so this is one of the financial models that I made uh, earlier the first thing that I do in a financial model is I name a lot of cells so if you just take a look in the control sheet you will find that a lot of cells are named here so they will have a name here right and whenever I'm using the name in the financial model I use a tab key to pick up the name so let's say for example I am using let's say something here so let's say I'm using revenue share or something so I'm just gonna write revenue and when I go to the revenue share if I want to pick that up rather than using the mouse I'm gonna use the tab key to pick that up you can you also use the tab key to pick up formulas so let's say if you're writing the index formulas you can use index and write I n and then use the tab key to pick that up that's a really cool way to pick up the formulas with the keyboard the other thing that uh, I often use is uh, I often have to insert rows uh, while I'm doing the calculation so let's say for example I have the total revenue here and let's say if I forgot to add another line of revenue so I'm just going to use the shortcut alt I R to add one row now if I wanted to add not one but three rows I'm going to select three rows and then I'm going to press alt I R and then I will be able to add three rows right and then uh, similarly I'm just gonna write whatever I want to write here and add it right the other thing that I use uh, a lot of times um, just sorry so uh, how did I delete the rows I selected the entire row by using shift and then the spacebar selected the rows at the bottom and then use the shortcut control and minus key to remove the rows right all right the other thing that I use is um, uh, for summing I use alt equals to to sum the cells and then I use control R to copy the cells to the right for the very fact that the model is locked from here and you'll be only reaching till the end of the actual model right so you'll not be going beyond that right and I just also want to highlight the uh, application of uh, making a template like this now if you just take a look that uh, all your sheets your revenue sheet your expenses sheet your balance sheet your income statement everything is going to be uh, in the same template and you can easily know that uh, H column stands for 2017 and J column stands for 2019 and so on and so forth so you will not make a mistake by wrongly linking the data into other years so that's kind of a benefit of actually working with the template it forces you to do the calculations in a very very structured manner all right so that was about uh, doing the calculations or using the shortcuts when you're actually making the financial model the next thing that I'm going to discuss is what shortcuts can you use while you're auditing the model all right so auditing the model means that you either have finished the financial model and you want to audit that for any errors that are there in the model and want to fix them or let's say you've got a financial model from some other analyst or some other client of yours and you want to see that how the model is linked and how the model is working for that what you need to do is you need to audit the formulas and that's the biggest part of auditing the model let me just ju jump over to the uh, expenses sheet and this is where I have a lot of calculations and uh, let me just show you uh, first the basic uh, auditing uh, and then move on to more uh, advanced level of auditing right so the, the the most basic shortcut that I use to audit the formulas is by using the F2 key what the F2 key do, does is it highlights the cells that are linked inside the formula so if you just take a look here it just highlights the cells that are there in the formula never ever read the formula in the formula bar that's a very very bad practice always read the formula by pressing the F2 key on that cell right the second thing that I use uh, a lot of times is um, uh, let's say for example this formula where I'm trying to calculate the revenue sharing is revenue share multiply by the revenue multiply by this trigger right and if I use the shortcut control and open square bracket I repeat it's not the usual bracket it's a control on the keyboard and open square bracket right uh, if you use that shortcut what this is the shortcut is going to do is it's going to go to the first cell inside the formula the first cell inside the formula is revenue share and if I use that shortcut by control and open square bracket it's going to go to revenue share so if you see that it's going to go to revenue sharing right and you can see that we have a 1% revenue share all right um, let me just uh, come back here 
So if you want to go to the first cell uh, of the formula, you can use the uh, control and the square open bracket. So similarly, if the first cell here is G15, if I use control and square open bracket, this is going to go here and also select the rest of the cells that are used in the formula. All right. Sometimes it does help. The second shortcut that I use a lot of times is uh, a little better than this. So let's say, for example, not always you will find the need to go to the first cell or let's say some sometimes you would also need to find to go to the second um, let's say cell linked in the formula how would you go to this cell so either there are two ways you can either go to the revenue sheet and then click on that cell or you can directly go it from here so you can just select this entire thing using the keyboard and then press the f5 key when you press the f5 key the address of the cell that you've selected will automatically come come in the go to box Right, you can see that and now I can just press enter and this is going to go to the cell, right? And I can just press the escape key to come back to where I was working. So you can, if you want, you can change the linking as well from here, but it's a good way of tracking how the formula is actually working. The other thing that um, I use is in formula calculation a lot of times. Um, let's say for example, uh, let's just take a look at this. Okay, this is a pretty long formula and let's say I just want to calculate the total length of the road. So this is a uh, toll point length one plus toll point length two. And if I only want to calculate that, I can select these two things. So the first one and the second one, and I can just use the F9 key to do an in cell calculation. You can see that I get the total length of the road and I can do a small audit of the formula right then and there. Now, if I press enter, this is going to take 154 as a static value, but I have to press escape or a control Z to get back here, right? So that's a little uh, trick that I use a lot of times while doing small little calculations inside the cell. Uh, the other thing that I use a lot of times is tracing dependence and precedence. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, if I want to find out that uh, the total construction days is uh, this much and uh, I want to find out that how many cells are using this cell as a calculation or this cell inside their calculation. So I'm going to press the shortcut Alt T U and D for Delta, right? And this is going to show me that this calculation is leading to so many other cells, right? Uh, this is ex now this is going to slow down your worksheets tremendously, but the the reason why I uh, use this shortcut is because while deleting a cell, I want to make sure that that cell is not going to any other cells, and that's one of the best ways to see that where all is this cell going, right? So uh, how do you want to clear the arrows? Alt T U A is the shortcut to clear off the arrows, right? Don't worry about this. This is just a thing that it shows. It's just going to get off in a while, right? Now let's say, for example, if I want to find out that where is the calculation is coming from. So let's say this cell is using uh, these one, two, and three, four cells to, to calculate. I can just press Alt T U T, T for Tango, to see that where is the calculation coming from. That's called tracing precedence. Uh, so from here, and from these two cells on the top, right? So these are the two shortcuts that I use. A lot of times I also use formula auditing bar to calculate uh, long formula. So let's say this is a pretty long formula. Maybe I understand it, maybe I don't understand it. And I want to do a step-by-step -step calculation. So I will use the shortcut um, Alt T U F for opening the evaluate formula box. And I will do the calculations here and I can Keep on pressing the space bar to kind of evaluate how the formula is being formed and do all that stuff, right? And you can see that how the step-by-step -step calculations are moving and how you finally derive the answer, right? So that was the last thing that I wanted to discuss uh, as a formula auditing bar. And the last thing that I'm going to share with you is saving tips that how do you actually save the financial model? All right, when you're saving the model, uh, what I will suggest is why don't you save the model uh, as save as. So I'm going to use the shortcut F12 to open the save as box. And then and the way I save the model is, let's say, for example, I include the comments uh, uh, of the work that I've done in the model right in the name of the model. So let's say, for example, this has been updated, updated uh, with circular calculations, right? 
something whatever whatever name you'd like to give you can give it in the name itself and a little note of what have you done in the model and then keep on saving more and more versions of the model so this can be let's say uh, completed uh, let's say 1.2 and then you will have 1.3 1.4 1.5 and then in the bracket you can also include the work that you've done in the model this way you won't have you have to open the model all the time to see what what is the most updated model and if you want to go back to the previous versions of the model that you had to, that you had made earlier you can easily track that out you're not working on the same model over and over again all right so those are the few tips uh, tricks and the shortcuts that i often use while making a financial model if you have any questions please 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 put them down in the comments below and thank you so much kunal for asking me this question bye bye and take care of yourself